Tony Hinchcliffe. Tony Hinchcliffe would excel at that. Mr. Roast? He's the best at that. There's no one better. There's no one better at like finding something funny about some horrible aspect of what just happened. Jimmy Carr's pretty good. Yes. Yes. He's <laughs> very good at it. Yeah, the two of them could duke it out. It'd be a lot of fun. I think they might have done like a roast battle. They have. have they? That's right. They have. On TV. Wow. <laughs> that would be like an <laughs> unstoppable object and an immovable force. Tony comes up with them. They're so fast. You can't believe they're not scripted. Like his brain just, oh, but it's that. It's like that 24-7. Like in the green room, he's always like got puns for everything. It's just, I don't, his mind just works in a really weird joke writer way. Well, Mark Norman's the same, right? He just oh, yeah. can't not oh, do yeah. it. Cannot do it. Yeah. Very similar. Very sim- I mean, Mark's even more extreme. <laughs> yeah. It's unrelenting with him. <laughs> Fucking hell. Mark can't, he, like, if he gets panicky if we're talking about something weird. Like, he'll, he, he goes, I think they're going to think it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> like, his attention span is like, it's so short. Like, I don't think he ever watches documentaries. I don't know. It's just, I was, he's always going. I think I, I texted him a stat about 77% of 18 to 24 year olds in the US are ineligible to join the military because of being overweight or mental or drug problems. And he just replied with, Meal Team Six. <laughs> That's him, 24-7. That's just how his brain works. He's so good at it. He's so good at it. It's a, mar- it's a marvel of personality. Like when, when we do protect our parks, he's just like this. He's like, the, he's like a, a special. You know, like you have, if you're going to make a really good stew, it's not just meat. You know, you want carrots in there. You want potatoes. You want spices. Like he's a critical spice. He's a big carrot. He's something that's very important to that recipe being delicious. Like <laughs> fucking phenomenal, he's, dude. He's such a good guy too. There's this <clears throat> idea about uh, in Blackadder, Rowan Atkinson, this famous British comedy. Uh, he was saying, "You know your bits, don't you?" One of the actors says to him, and he says, "This is different. It's spontaneous, and it's called wit." And I just always stuck in my mind that there's a difference between having prepared and well-constructed stuff in advance and then being able to, no matter what it is, whether it's insights, whether it's debate, whether Mm -hmm. it's argumentation, whether it's uh, analysis, all of those things, the ability for someone to just turn it on like that. The verbal sparring aspect of it. Some people don't like that. And then there's some comics that aren't, aren't really good at that. They're not good at like dealing with audience members or anything like that. They're not good at answering questions. But they they're good at like long takes on things where they sit alone in contemplation and go over some ironic aspect of a topic and then they write out really good material about it. Mm. It's still super valid. It's like there's no one that's better than the other, but it's there's different personalities that get attracted to the idea of constructing a stand-up comedy routine and s- for some personalities they're not like a conflict personality or a, yeah well you're a this they're not that guy or that girl there's someone who s- gets some subject bothers them whatever it is climate change whatever it is and they just sit on it and they're like what is and then to be alone, they'll be in front of the computer, they'll get a notebook out, they just sit on it for fucking days sometimes, bounce it around, back and forth, twist it around, start it from this way, start it from, start it from the back, back it up, go from the conclusion first, and then explain your conclusion in a hilarious way. See if it works better that way. And you, you'll, you'll do that, and then that type of comic, like that mindset, can create great bits. They're great comics. But they just don't like to do the audience thing. But that's okay, too. It's like, you, you can't ask someone to change their personality. But Tony is like, he's a razor-tongued man. If you talk shit to Tony, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna fuck you up. If, Dancing with death. Yeah, I mean, he's, and he's not physically imposing whatsoever. So it makes it even more brutal when he comes after you. The same as Michael Malice. Yes, yes, exactly. But Michael once told me, he said, I couldn't get away with half of the shit that I say if I wasn't five foot seven. Yeah, it helps. It certainly helps. It helps to be, a, a, yeah, like someone who you can't hit because they're they're weaker than you. Yeah. But Tony walks that fucking line. Woo! Whitney was telling me before, I did a little tour toward the back end of last year, which was pretty interesting. And I was saying, what should I expect? He says, expect to get a bit more boring as it goes on. It's like, what do you mean? He said, well, in order for art to imitate life, you have to live a life. And the problem is, if you're on the road, 
all you know are airports and hotels and dinners and shows and yes. that's it and she was saying that she was in a hollywood scriptwriters meeting and they were saying it's a saturday morning where is she and someone shouted from the back she's at a baby shower and he was like who goes to a baby shower all right uh she, she's doing a wine tasting she's like no one goes to a wine tasting and the room turned and apparently said no whitney you don't like other normal people do that right so you've got this vicious uh trap of success it must happen with musicians as well like yes. how are you supposed to you know if you're some heartfelt singer talking about your makeups and breakups of relationships and now you're dealing with the fear of me too that's, that doesn't exactly give sort of beautiful romance around what you're talking about the same thing goes for comedians same thing goes for anything like the whole point of what you're trying to do is be representation be representative for the normal person yes and the more that your life becomes strange and rarefied and on the road the less of that you get to experience which is less inspiration for the art yeah yeah it's a matter of like what are you doing when you're on the road are you on the road just to make money because then you just have to just treat it as a very fortunate job and you definitely are not going to get the same kind of life experience you're not you're just not you're going to be traveling all the time and you're going to be staying in hotels you're going to be doing gigs most of your time will be thinking about doing the material that you prepared and getting your set together but you could still take stuff in if you choose to you know you can go to cities and check out museums you can go to cities and you know go on a tour of the town you just have to be proactive and you could watch documentaries. Like, I like to watch documentaries on the road. I try to educate myself more on the road than watching something just, just entertaining. So, like, I'm on the road. I'm supposed to be doing stand-up. I'm awake. Let me watch something on Nepal. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me get in, interested in something. Like, let me get my mind stimulated with something other than just performing and traveling. Yeah. But you have to choose to. It's like you have to choose to go to the gym. Like when I, um, everyone's like, how's the jet lag? I go, J you just got to kill it. It's just like a thing you have to do. It's like jumping in the cold water. Like it sucks, but if you do it, you'll feel better. You got to go right to the gym. Like the moment you land, er, plane lands, get, check into your hotel, gym, gym right away. No Stink. ifs, ands, or buts. Go to the fucking gym. Or do a hotel workout. You could do a, a great body weight workout. You could do a yoga routine. In Staying hotel in hotels room. with gyms is the easiest it's hack nice. for that. Oh, it's so nice. If you go to a, a hotel and they have kettlebells, like, oh my God, this is amazing. Game over. Yeah, this is amazing. And so you just get a nice workout in, really fucking exert your body, get that sweat going, get your heart rate up, and you'll settle in. All that jet lag shit, it's nonsense. It all goes away, even when you travel. When I go to overseas, it's like, just, just fucking work out one day really hard. And then it seems like pretty much resets just everything. Resets everything. It's like it's like a threshold.